start the recording so everyone is on board with this. So welcome again to Cloud Technologies. Um, first of many sessions that we're going to have. And we have, um, well, you know, as we are, we usually have um, ages, that is uh, half the Christmas time to prepare for our courses. But when we look at it, we realize, oh, we have very little time to actually do so, meaning presenting the courses and actually um, doing some them. So let's get uh, going. Today, um, I'm largely talking about administrative stuff, that is introducing the course, the principles, we bought it, talk a bit about the kind of infrastructure we're using. I got quite a number of mails already by individual students who said they couldn't join or have trouble joining um, this, this course to some extent and uh, um, um, send some mails around. But I want to really talk about how we do things in this course, because it may not be the way you experienced uh, or may, you may have experienced in earlier courses. Um, yeah, exactly. So. I'm not alone here, um, but rather I'm joined by well, my uh, splendid teaching team. And uh, yeah, everyone is present. That's brilliant. So on the one hand, we have um, Marius, who's joining us, um, a fellow lecturer, of course. Some of you have experienced him in, and he will um, be responsible for particular the programming parts or at least the initial programming parts of the course. Uh, we're talking about Go or Golang as a particular language that um, you want to feel acquainted with, at least uh, after the third week, I guess, second or third week uh, of the course, because we rely in inherently on this one for most of the assignments and practicals. But um, I think Marsh will also pull any possible tooth you might have, have with respect to fearing learning yet another programming language, because it's a very uh, consumable one, if you like. Um, so I think we, we kind of um, have the um, um, an optimal kind of choice here with respect to complexity, but also novelty on the one end. So, but not only is Myrish here, but also Siamak is here, Siamak um, I, I see him on the top left, but I'm not sure where you see him. Uh, he is also um, supporting the lecture part um, later down the course in particular, but also just joins, joins the um, tutorial sessions, of course, and the support that uh, you might have. And we have three other um, um, teaching assistants that are, uh, you know, well acquainted with the cloud technologies uh, course, generally because they took them took the course themselves um, some time ago. It was a slightly different course back then. Of course, things change. Um, that's one of the recognitions we definitely need to offer as well, that things change. I'll get back to that in later. But uh, um, they have ex um, particular experience with cloud technologies and Golang, of course. And that is uh, Jon Gunnar Fossum. Uh, he's here. I'll just introduce him uh, later with some interest as well. Uh, Leon Cinquemani. I, I always, yeah, so, uh, Leon, feel free to correct me if I I've got the pronunciation wrong, but I, you usually give me a free pass, so I appreciate this. And um, uh, Swing Kari Bjornsson, we have also um, joining us. So, um, and all of those, that's the shared feature, they're all master students in the max degree. So, so advertising, master of applied computer science. So, um, before you consider joining the industry, which I strongly discourage you from doing so, jokes, um, consider taking the max degree uh, that's the natural progression for example for the b pro and also possibly for the b data degree uh, if you want to stay in uh, you having continued education there in different areas if you want to learn more about this of course you can talk to uh, any of us really uh, being the students that experiencing it right now or the uh, lecturers that are to some extent responsible for that experience so okay um that aside i'll talk a bit more about this uh, teaching team give me a second i'll just uh, attempt to share my slides Granted, since this is the first uh, session in the new year, likely my infrastructure will fail me. Um, but at least the experience is shared. So, um, all right, cloud technologies. Um, I hope you see my screen. I have a bit of an agenda set up just to uh, get us going uh, in this um, year. I think you see everything. Um, first of all, talking a bit about, uh, or we will talk about our teaching principles and how we think about the course. Uh, philosophically to some extent and of course uh, iterate over the staff again um, then give you a sense of the course outline the uh, learning environment what i mean with learning environment i'm actually thinking about the learning management system sorry for not being as uh, clear about this and then uh, we actually turn to you a bit because i need to know or actually we need to know a bit more about you you know where you are coming from that is experience wise and uh, where do you want to go to as well because cloud technologies in many instances is a course that draws on a lot of experience that you have already. On the one hand, many of you uh, had, may have had a course in operating systems, um, of course, programming in ver to varying extents and depths, um, but then also perhaps operational experience that you also bring. So cloud technology is a bit of a melting pot of all those experiences and bringing them together 
uh, in order to you know develop uh, meaningful um, products um, as we'll learn and then we'll see how far we get today but uh, the intent is to talk a bit about the principles of cloud technologies as we see them right now uh, conceptually first but uh, let me just introduce again um, the staff just to have a bit of an overview and rundown of course i will share all the slides with you as well in the learning management system once we get there um, and to, to get a bit of a sense you know who we are and so kind of to recover who uh, uh, you who you want to deal with in particular circumstances bear in mind every time we introduce ourselves we're not only taking the opportunity to of course say hey we're teaching here but also to say what are we doing as researchers as well because all of us have some sort of research interests or practical interests um, that may or may not be of relevance to you because this course is also made to have a considerable project component um, uh, as I mentioned before, cloud brings together a lot of different experiences, and I think it would be great if you guys can leverage this experience as well as part of the projects you're going to do um, in the later part of the course, of course. So my name is Christopher Franz. I'm, of course, here in the computer science department. Um, you may or may not believe it. My actual uh, research interest is more in the area of institutional analysis. Well, what is that? That is the kind of analysis of laws, for instance, or norms of behavior in society and so on, and modeling them so using some sort of artificial societies, for instance. For instance, so it has a bit of a link to, on the one hand, natural language processing, on the other hand, to um, artificial intelligence, of course. So that's me. We have Myers here. He will certainly talk more about his interests. He's, uh, uh, of course, very committed. That's to some extent implied. We all have interest in programming and natural interest, but uh, it's one of his very strong suits. Um, and uh, with search wise, particular focus on distributed ledger technology. I think commonly you may have heard about blockchain technology, if you like, but I think we don't use that anymore, right? So we um, think about more abstractly about um, distributed ledger systems as, as one thing. And another um, focal um, expertise is, of course, uh, the one on mobile systems. If you were to take the max degree, you would find that he is the leads the specialization courses in that very uh, area, in both those areas, in fact. So, um, yeah, we have, then we have Siamak here, Siamak um, Ratami, he is a PhD candidate in computer science. And, uh, well, it's actually quite, I think we're quite diverse in our setups and interests. He is interested, of course, in, in, uh, in optimization problems and um, solution, algorithmic solutions to optimization problems, of course, natural language processing, and guess what, agent-based modeling, uh, to some extent a concession to the fact that uh, uh, I'm a supervisor. But, um, so there's, there's little flexibility on that one. Then we have um, Jon Gunnar Fossum, uh, Max students. He, he's currently in Graz, so we actually have, if if not for him, I'm not sure if we have any international in this course right now. Usually, it's quite popular with internationals, but given the current uh, situation, um, that's of course I'm, I'm, I don't have a real sense yet. We'll probably learn about this a bit later. But if not for anything else, then uh, Jon Gunnar can play the proxy international for us because he's currently at the Technical University in Graz in Austria and uh, learning there um, more, I think, about computer graphics and augmented reality in particular, but has uh, gone through our game development uh, bachelor um, degree um, some time ago uh, before that. Similarly, Leon also makes students second year about to finish or to, to engage in the thesis, uh, game development, computer graphics, and very interesting computational storytelling. So that's an interesting one. I struggle with telling stories in real life, and he wants to push it one step further. We'll see where we end up there with your master thesis, thesis in the end. And then uh, Swain Kara has, of course, also quite a diverse interest, and he's very operational in kind. So cross-platform development as one of the interests. Linux, yes, finally someone, um, because um, Linux is, of course, to some extent also on the table for, for us here in the course. We get back to this later. Um, mobile applications and uh, uh, concerns such as test-driven development and from an application side, uh, e-learning uh, of particular interest. So I am hope to learn from him more than he can probably learn from me on that one. So, um, yeah, so we, we are quite broad in our setups and interests and experiences. Of course, what unites us is that we all have a relationship to the cloud course and the experience and the programming language and the tools that we're going to use. Um, but it also gives you a bit of a sense if you want to step outside the, your comfort zone and try something else, you may actually already know whom to kind of get in touch with, right? So quite a bit of a, a diversity there. Okay, so um, part of the reason why we are such a huge group is on the one hand that we are touching on very diverse topics, talking about programming, for example, that uh, Marish will introduce, but also, uh, again, a cloud technology bringing together such a, a different set of um, techniques, but then also, to be honest, the setting we're in. I'm looking right now on the participants list. We have 99 participants. Okay, 100 just now, minus the 
six that we are so um yeah 94 participants which is huge cause right so we uh, need to have a look in how far we can ensure that you have the best possible kind of support that you get and an aspect that's to some extent alleviated even more by the online situation we find ourselves uh, again in uh, i hope this will change uh, just a heads up the course we have nominated this course to go hybrid as soon as possible um as the situation stands that will probably maybe end of january um but we need to play by uh by ear to some extent of course by regulation as well um but try to run the course hybrid as soon as possible and then it would be very desirable to have of course you know a lot of um uh, assistance where you need it for your programming activities and so on okay um yeah i think that's uh, enough about us for now we come back to this in case you get uh, confused also again provide you an, an overview of the different uh, contact um, channels and communication channels that you can use throughout the course because that's very important right now since we don't see ourselves physically um, we have a diverse set of um, communication channels some of them which I outlined in my email already earlier to you discord for instance which is kind of an informal one uh, but other ones as well we get back to this so what is the course about well the course is a bit of a mix on the one hand uh, we are in university so uh, bad luck we need to do a bit of theory um, uh, so there will be some sessions that are inherently conceptual or theoretical about cloud technologies and the principles that underlie it. And of course, we have a lot of practical components as well. So um, the practical components is to some extent that we run tutorials, particularly in class, uh, meaning we, we talk about concepts that, for example, we introduce theoretically and then apply them with more practice. And then you are in a position to kind of, you know, um, apply them in your own projects or um, uh, perform exercises or variation. We'll share a lot of code samples as well. So you have the opportunity to explore those independently. And then we have the odd uh, Q&A session where it's needed or fits uh, depending on assignment progress and otherwise. So that's quite um, central um, for that, for, for, for central component of the course. So it's quite applied as you will feel, if not, you can put in the feedback and tell us, no, no, guys, you're doing it way too theoretical. We need more application. However, I doubt so. I haven't had that feedback yet. Um, so one thing that is a bit at odds, um, and mostly for one reason, and that's the online setting we're in right now, that peer interaction is to some extent central. Um, what does that mean? Well, um, the best learning is usually done amongst you, not so much by us for you in a way, right? So you're kind of um, if you had that marriage before, you most likely would have motivated that, you know, learning, you need to own your own learning process because you come from very different perspectives and uh, starting points, but it's probably best facilitated by actually learning also from each other, but also to engage in something that uh, you may know as empathy, but that is perspective taking. Uh, why do I say this? It sounds a bit weird. Um, we'll use in this course the notion of peer review. So. You will be performing assignments, of course, but instead of only relying on us to kind of review your assignment, give you feedback, uh, we, um, in part as a concession to scale of the course, but also to um, learning based on experience, will uh, involve you in the actual peer review of others. And we do kind of the meta review of this very uh, process because it will give you also a bit of a sense how others feel when they look at other people's code in a way, like they're seeing the odd side um, that you're usually not exposed to, at least not to this stage in a degree likely, that you most likely have been looking at your own code primarily and get some feedback uh, on that. Um, the other aspect of, of interaction that's more direct is our learning management environment or learning management platform. Um, I sent an email earlier, as I mentioned already, that we are going to be using GitLab as our um, learning management system, if you like, or platform. Why GitLab? Um, well, for many reasons. On the one hand, it's uh, a cheap opportunity to learn Markdown if you haven't already. Um, second of all, it's a software development environment, a very natural one. So um, something that you will likely be exposed to anyway either in courses, you may already have experience in courses, likely, I believe, in the first year, there's quite a bit of use of GitLab, at least in some of the degrees that are represented here. Um, and um, the interaction is quite naturally fitting to the course instead of using um, a blackboard, for instance, because we rely a lot of sharing on, of code, code samples and so on. Uh, and um, also we can leverage a bit of the professionalism that it means uh, to, for example, interact via issues. So, for example, for communication, we inherently rely on issues as you will learn. So um, 
now looking at you, I mentioned already that peer interaction is kind of central and it comes back to the role or the way in which we see students in this particular course. What are you going to take away from this course? Well, guess what? Likely programming experience and skill, but that's not the only thing because that's something you get in other courses as well, hopefully. And we also talk about, of course, about deployment to some extent. And so there is a bit of an agile component in this course because it depends a bit uh, on, on how fast and how far we get. Um, so we'll, we'll see how, uh, you know, what specifics you learn about all those different aspects. Um, but there's not only the, of course, the more practical side of learning programming, but there's also a bit of a transfer knowledge that you bring in, in terms of independently for hopefully designing um, and um, implementing, of course, um, applications in, you know, here in this particular instance, um, in the context of cloud technologies, of course, but also to perform evaluations of your own work, other people's work, and careful, hold tight, uh, also to present to others. I'm not sure in how far you have needed to be doing this one, but the idea is also in the later part of the course, there's a project that you can devise yourself, will give you, of course, certain parameters for this, um, but that you can then uh, design and actually also present to kind of convince us that it's a desirable and uh, a good, uh, interesting product as well. So that's kind of a first step towards your, uh, you know, bachelor thesis thinking where you kind of also need to um, you know, develop a project and kind of independently present it. So we try to develop you a bit more holistically from a multi, multi different, many different starting points, as you will see. So, and hopefully you take something away from this. So that's a bit of the principles of philosophies that we put afford, uh, forward for, for this particular course. So if you um, get a sense or question yourself, why are they doing this particular thing? This is part of the underlying principles that we of course come back to. Okay. But now the part you actually have been waiting for, and that's of course what is part of the course. This is not a conclusive and exhaustive overview. I show you a bit more comprehensive overview later when we look at the learning management system, GitLab that is, uh, but perhaps to get a bit of a sense. Um, the course um, traditionally relies on, is traditionally set up to provide a basic understanding of Linux. So that's something we need to play a bit agile because I understand you are amongst the first cohorts that have a dedicated introductory Linux course in your first year of your degree. I hope I'm right, fingers crossed. Um, if not, then we'll figure it out later because I'm going to get to know that particular part. So, um, but in as far as you have um, some sort of Linux foundations, it's probably, it will be sufficient to, to, to participate in the course. If not, we'll look at this uh, later uh, down, down the course down the track where it's become uh, necessary for the operational aspects of cloud technologies. You will find that cloud technology as they are um, deployed and managed nowadays are inherently uh, server centric and thereby definition um, very much Linux centric. So it would be a bit of a pity getting through a course without knowing anything about Linux in the end. So it's very unlikely that the, uh, you will leave us with that experience. So um, we're going to see about that. The second aspect, and that's kind of a core uh, aspect that will accompany us throughout the entire course, is basically the programming language that we uh, deem, um, you know, central. And that will be Golang, or um, well, Golang has celebrated, I think, what is the 11th or 12th birthday already, right? So that's a, it, it slowly becomes a very uh, entrenched uh, programming language, and but it has long lived along the sidelines, mostly because it's only used in server side, and usually for rather small scale application or scope services in particular, and that makes it particularly attractive for us to explore it a bit and use it a bit. So in the next three sessions, I can prepare you already for this. The next three sessions, plural, um, that is Wednesday and the entire next week, meaning the Monday and Wednesday session of the upcoming week, Marish will talk about Golang. Um, and the reason why he's doing this, because um, this is the part of the course that we link between the course PROC 2005, that's us, and PROC 2006, that's the advanced programming course that the bachelor in programming course students have, but they are going to learn uh, Golang there anyway, as an example of an imperative programming language um, and system level, to some extent, programming language. So it only makes sense to join forces a bit, so you have uniform experience. You don't learn the same thing twice from different perspectives if you are a BPROC student and you have the shared kind of experience if you are coming from anywhere else. So the idea is to have a kind of shared build up in terms of where Golang uh, sits and the kind of foundations of the language. I'll later then take over and we talk more specifically about aspects in, and applications of Golang that pertain more specifically to um, cloud computing, cloud technologies, not so much uh, 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 generic aspects of the programming language. So it will be largely covered um, by Marius. After that, we're going to switch a bit and move towards um, REST services. Um, many of you will have learned or read about REST already, but we talk a bit about the principles. We talk about you know what what why we 
need standardization in this space what other standards exist as well we talk about uh, graphql as another application uh, very likely data on the course so that's uh, relevant from the implementation side of the course in particular when it comes to programming and then we backtrack a bit and hopefully I find the time to look more generally and hopefully we start already today a bit talk about um, cloud technology principles and most commonly the you know asterisk aas as a service kind of uh, variants that you will have encountered in your life already just by you know looking over uh, um, latest developments in in the area of programming um and you know particular things like sas pass and is um so the fundamental principles uh, the technological uh, aspects underlying it but also economic aspects because cloud technologies is not so much uh, i need to be careful here but it's not so much only a technical um, concern is particularly an economic consideration that makes it so attractive to think about cloud technologies or cloud computing more immediately. So we'll talk about this a tad more. Um, <clears throat> then it, now it becomes interesting because I mentioned earlier that this course brings together a lot of different experiences from different perspectives. And um, this is where the operations come in. So on the one end, of course, we have the programming experience. You get a conceptual understanding of the cloud technologies, but also then we're going to look at um, operational aspects, more specifically how to deploy services like this, and not necessarily to become uh, have mastery in terms of operations, uh, IT operations, because there's a dedicated more or less degree on this, and some of them, some of you may in fact be part of that very degree, um, um, sponsored by the Department of Information Security, but at least to know about the interface between development and, of course, so the large scale deployment. So we talk a bit about uh, solutions in that area, OpenStack, for instance, um, for a um, infrastructure uh, deployment solution, and uh, Docker as um, de facto standard for uh, containerization solutions nowadays. And then hopefully we get further into kind of looking at you know op innovation opportunities that cloud technology simply sponsors us based on the flexible composition, flexible composition of different services. Uh, and um, hopefully the pinnacle of this course is the final project you're going to have um, in which you kind of roll your own, as I say right now, basically bring together different aspects of it, perhaps selectively focus on developing a new application to so be quite innovative in your approach, or perhaps uh, use a more um, a traditional approach in which you explore new features or very particular features, be it of a programming language, be it of a cloud solution that exists already. Uh, or otherwise. So we're inherently flexible there, but not so much in the beginning. So the beginning is a bit more prescribed to ensure that we all have the same kind of experience when we come out of this course or come to that stage so that you all independently, you know, know how Golang works. You can deploy Golang, you can devise basic architecture. So I'm confident that you all have this basic understanding because you, before you drift off and doing things that hopefully interest you more immediately. Um, okay. So, yeah, what does that mean actually for you? Well, there's a set, a set of challenges that we, of course, need to be in mind. We have the good old uh, uh, remote teaching concern, of course. I mentioned that before we have changing content, cloud technologies, inherently dynamic. And I think that's part of the justification why we have this open ended project at the end. So you can explore areas that you are particularly interested in. And of course, we have very diverse student backgrounds, study student backgrounds in terms of study programs and possibly internationals as well. That would be something to figure be figured out in a bit be quite interesting um so we just see how we bring this all together because you will have very different levels of course for example programming experience exposure to operations uh, and so on so it will be quite interesting to see how we um bring this on a common denominator um uh, every year so that's um something that we need to bear in mind or you will see us bearing in mind what is new for you well again you know New programming languages always bring their challenges uh, alongside, but you also hopefully um, develop some expertise in terms of um, suitability. Um, sometimes when you have a problem, you tend to frame any problem that you see in terms of the technologies you know. Here, the idea is a bit different that we also want to have you think a bit more freely and think about, okay, what's the kind of technology, cloud technology, that may actually be useful for solving this particular problem, or should there be cloud technology in the first place anyway? Perhaps it's you know solved with more conventional approaches anyway. So it's also this reflectiveness uh, about you being able to decide or you know being consulted on what is useful in a particular context. And then of course again, um, uh, bringing back everything to a kind of ritual understanding and knowledge that you should have about cloud technologies, uh, the theoretical principles and also practical principles, both the hopefully economic aspects, to some extent legal aspects, but also operational aspects. So those kind of three pillars 
uh, are um, not necessarily technical, uh, I, at least I don't deem them inherently technical in kind, um, that you want to kind of be aware of, because you may find yourself in the future in again, in this decision position to figure out, okay, you know, do we use cloud technology and which one do we use and so on. And then it becomes quite useful to also be able and be aware to think about those different aspects more explicitly. So that's that one. Very uh, relevant. Okay. Um, so yeah, the as with any course, I uh, will walk you through the um, learning outcomes to some extent and the course rules and then a learning management system. And um, some aspects we can't negotiate because your study program has cloud technologies built in as one of the fundamental components. And the expectation is that future courses can draw on this as well, right? All the experience, the outcomes you should have taken away from this very course. So there's little, little space for us to negotiate and play with this. But what we can do is, of course, how we meet and achieve those, right? So where we can introduce more flexibility in the course uh, and where, you know, where we need to be more hard and ensure that you really um, work according to kind of the rules that we uh, prescribe. And I think this is a good trigger or for me, I think it's a good reminder to actually start, first of all, learning more about you. And then probably I'll show you a bit more about the the kind of um, study program, sorry, the learning management system that we're going to use. So first, first of all, before we get into the learning outcomes discussion, and that um, I just want to get a sense of who's actually on the course. And you will have all likely seen um, people using Mentimeter in various courses. And we'll try to do that hopefully only to a moderate and useful extent here as well. But it would still help me to get a bit of a sense to learn who you are uh, as, a, as, a, as a group right now. And um, let me iterate, reiterate, I'm super impressed that we indeed have um, 94 participants right now. This is a really high number, way more than I expected, because right now Blackboard is about 70. But that shouldn't be a problem at all. It just means that we need to get our um, fractions right when we calculate the unveil. Is that a Norwegian term? I think so, right? The, the part, the share of the um, individual study programs in the um, course. Right, that looks like parity between more or less B data and B proc. Interesting. Okay, so one third, roughly B proc, closely followed by uh, the Bachelor of Engineering, Data Engineering, particular big sec, uh, really high. So yep. So yeah, we're getting there. You guys are moving. One other. That's always exciting to learn more about the other. If you feel or dare, feel free to post in the chat what other or two others. What other means is internationals or uh, this different other study pro would be great for me to learn about it. Just to know sometimes where people are coming from because this course is kind of a bit of a compulsory for um, B proc B data, but um, also an elective for many other degrees. So it's um, always good to get a sense of where you're coming from. No bit sex students anymore. I believe that degree is. Um, does no longer exist, right? I think that's the underlying. Now it's mostly introduced into digital security. Cool. All right. I think that uh, gives me a good sense, the distribution. So BData is really catching up. Wow, you guys fighting yourselves there. Oh, no, that's a commitment. OK, I, th I think that should be um, to some extent representative. I think I'll go with this. Feel free to post uh, 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 more, but I think that gives me what I wanted or needed from this one. So cool. All right. Um, OK, well, since we're on you, actually, I wanted to uh, uh, scaffold this a bit later, but let's do Linux as well and, and a bit of your experiences first. So in, now we know where we're coming from. One of the questions I ask usually is, you know, how do you sit with Linux, right? Do you have had Linux exposure? Do you feel comfortable on the command line in particular? So we expect you to be, you know, somewhat able to operate um, on the command line, let me just reference a few commands and hopefully they resonate with you. Things like, you know, CD, MV, top, make dear, uh, um, RM, LS. Um, what else comes to mind? Uh, and that's that. Um, <clears throat> well, you, you H top if you are inclined to install something on top of it. Uh, app get anyone? Or, um, yes, or yep. Or um, what, el what else? Um, what other? Commands come to mind. Uh, uh, chmod, of course. Chown, please. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Good. So yeah. So we have a bit of an experience here. Low experience is dominating, but I think this is due to your 
uh, uh, fresh entry into the new year and you're, you're, you're probably you may not have reflected on how much you probably know about Linux already um, but probably you need to you know, negotiate a bit more I probably ask you next are there any, any uh, aspects you want to highlight that you all right um, are there aspects you want to highlight that you are not um, comfortable with and you feel you should be feel free to put them in the chat so i will collate this afterwards as part of the chat just to get an impression uh or, or where we need to make up or not but i'm already very positively surprised not surprised um, uh, uh, um I'm, I'm very positive about the fact that effectively every one of you indicated there's some linux experience and then we work with those that don't have any experience yet because that is of course something we can uh address also bear in mind it's not 100 percent urgent right now usually we have done a linux part very early in the course but i think we'll try to shift this a bit and start with golang first and then catch up um where we need okay cool sounds good 38 uh, uh low so uh, uh, medium to low low is probably the ones that took the course the ones that do uh that ticked high suspicion is those guys are actually running linux as their primary operating system that's usually the experience um Feel free to um, suggest otherwise in the chat, but that's usually how it turns out. Um, okay. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, works. I think we can work with this and then um, see what we need to do in order to accommodate um, the necessary Linux experience. In worst case, with a kind of crash course. Uh, just to get a sense of distribution, it's always fun to see what people do. Um, and. The usual response is um, that people post in the chat, hey, you didn't list my favorite distribution, of course. So I'm looking forward to any suggestion of that kind. Um, and it may well come from the TAs this time, so <laughs> I wouldn't be entirely surprised. So Ubuntu is prominent and popular. That said, Mentimeter is failing me because I have no clue whatsoever how many tick that. Um, but it's let's go with high. It's two digits in any case, and I think it's a uh, two leading uh, or, or three perhaps even i don't know so ubuntu is very high that doesn't surprise me because that's likely what you learned in the course in the first year course as well and that's actually the default distribution we're drawing on as well simply because it has a 25 percent market share um in in, in uh, for now anyway uh and that that makes it sufficiently representative also it's um has become a bit of a I know there will be pushbacks here, some sort of market de facto standard to some extent. And the commands, at least the core utils, are, of course, completely um, standard GNU compliant. Only with the software package management, that's quite a bit uh, different. That's kind of more the Debian side, the branch of, 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 of approaches which we learn about. There are, of course, other competing ones. Um, but we'll talk about this, of course, when the time comes as well. No one Alpine? No one is running Alpine or has experience with Alpine? Interesting. So it means you may not. Okay, so if anyone has uh, worked with, I'm not suggesting that, but uh, I think Alpine is slowly moving, uh, gaining in prominence simply because it's super lean, the image, and uh, therefore very popular in terms of, the, you know, minimal deployments uh, using being using Docker or um, using IIS solutions such as Amazon Web Services or otherwise. So that's what I'm asking. But it's cool. Ubuntu works. Um, that works. Debian, of course, um, it's, it's a minor deviation. Fedora, someone. Yep, cool. Well, hint, for to a Fedora person, be very cautious about reinstalling your operating system while we're running this course, please, right? I know you usually have a six month release cycle, so <laughs> you need to be a bit careful there. None, okay, that's valid and honest. Cool. Next time I ask for Windows 11, see if what, what I get here there. So um, it's probably also quite not a bit close to non for this, for, the, for at this stage. Zuse seems to be dead, okay, cool. Um, yep, if any of the other, just, just post in your chat what, what you're running. Um, Right, there's one comment that's valid. Can only pick one. A very good one. That's on me. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Uh, Arch is missing. Of course, it had to come. Uh, ah, welcome, Leon. I uh, Yes, you posted where you are from. And Visa, welcome as well to the course. Great. So I stick to English then. Well, I would have anyway. Uh, Mint, very good. Yes, Mint Linux, that's cool. Um, some experience with Arch, Kali Linux, okay. That's a very special application base. I bet you are from the information security side of things. <laughs> um, we are probably not using that uh, to great extent. Cool, but thank you very much for the overview. So 60, now we see clearer. 60 students have Ubuntu. That seems to be a clear dominance. Two thirds of the course have exposure. 
uh, to Ubuntu Cure. Okay, cool. I um, yeah. Since since we have some students that don't have any experience yet, I'll probably follow up at some stage with a you know a bit of a gauging um, of of a more accurate gauging of the experience to see what we need to talk about or if we can do this in a in a uh, you know by by pointing to necessary resources because of course I want to use the course time most effectively so you learn something new not necessarily um, uh, um, it, you know things that you actually know about already so. Um, but then that said, um, in the past year as well, we haven't pushed the depths of Linux um, capabilities too far anyway, because we have spent more time with, with Golang, so it's probably not too problematic if we don't reflect this immediately. Okay, the other picture. So first we talked a bit about operations and the kind of operating systems, your platforms you're comfortable with. What about programming languages? So that's also interesting. Mild warning, if you tick none, we're in trouble territory. So um or in fact type none so because the the choice is so large i i went with abandoning this and yes please lecturers don't over contribute <laughs> i feel that's happening already here as well um okay that's scary okay actually no it's still okay good news i can see go sorry i can't see go here can't see Go yet. That's no big deal yet. That's yeah. okay. Uh, but true, we don't see Go yet. But you know, there's a scary stuff. I see, for example, Haskell already. Um, so that will be interesting if we can excite those people because likely they have seen quite a bit more Rust this year. Oh, Go is there as well now. Okay, Go is not completely unpronounced. So the cool part is every time I look at this and get a bit of a sense and overview, you kind of see the trends of how our student body develops right and now the upcoming so that's basically what the my suspicion is what the tube index will spit out in two or three years <laughs> it's kind of a bit of a precursor what we get here already if anyone hasn't doesn't know tube index is the um pro, you know uh, one popularity index for programming languages that's released every year so you get a bit of a sense which programming languages are on the rise and which are on the decline so it's a good way uh, being aware of this and looking at it for your own investment in terms of you know the kinds of programming languages you want to learn about but it kind of reflects some of the key characteristics there for example that php is you know not as popular as it used to be javascript is ridiculously popular uh java is still there python is very popular for obvious reasons COBOL. i mean i must ask who was that <laughs> i don't know I, I mean if that was one of the students i'm really amazed because you will have a bright future that sounds like ironic but uh, it will likely be um, but this is uh, interesting. Okay, so I admit defeat, OVO. Uh, I have no, no sense or clue or any intuition what that would mean. OMO, OVO. If anyone wants to offer clarity, please, please feel free to do so. I'm excited to learn more about languages of that nature. We have Kotlin, MS Paint. Does it have scripting? I don't know. I. <laughs> If it had Visual Basic, yeah, okay, for applications that VBA, of course, would kind of count. CoffeeScript, cool. Uh, React.js, Scala, nice. You will be, you feel at home, especially. You will see that when Marge will talk about it next uh, session, uh, Scala, um, at least in my impression, has a lot, a lot of uh, at least syntactic similarities to GoLang. What happened right now? I didn't see. Of course, C, C plus plus, cool. That's mainstay. Uh, and there should be fun here. okay yeah i acknowledge my defeat here i would add behold as a response but um sure so cool okay quite a bit of uh, experience at least i don't read none that's good um that's always re uh, relieving and we have all kind of serious programming languages here uh which is good Yes. So with respect to Golang, um, if you haven't had exposure yet, I mean, having some experience with Java is definitely helpful and knowing a bit of C also doesn't hurt or C++ rather also doesn't hurt. You will feel very comfortable there. But uh, even if you don't, don't feel overwhelmed, um, it, it will be quite manageable. Cool. 82 responses. That is quite a rich uh, level of feedback. Thank you very much. By the way, I'll share the results so you can reflect on them as well uh, if you want to. Of course. Sure. IDEs, quick one. Just to see where we sit. And then we have a bit of a break. Um, one of the common feedback that I get in this course, uh, please break, we need a breaks and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, if I overrun my time and you realize you need a break, and I'm sure you will need because I sometimes talk too fast, then um, just indicate this in the chat so you can help me out a bit. But this time for sure, I shall remember. So we'll we'll do a um, later. We do a ten minute break at uh, four p.m. sharp. Okay, it's building up. Well, that's an interesting cloud here. So we have code at the center. Interesting. IntelliJ. Yeah, I would I was expecting that. C line. Yeah. Code blocks. Cool. Visual Studio Code. That's the kind of. Um, yep. And then Visual Studio. Sorry, I, I, I um, yeah, Visual Studio is more prominent, so that comes probably from the C plus plus people, I believe. That's my sense. Visual Studio Code definitely from the Linux people, um, plus someone else, and then uh, IntelliJ. Um, well, surprisingly popular there, it seems. And IntelliJ kind of cross platform, I guess. Notepad, cool, hardcore, sure. Ah, uh, hang on. There's Vim. That is hardcore. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll step back here. So. Xcode makes sense. Sublime, cool. Sus, Becker, okay. Anaconda, uh -huh. everything on JetBrains. Yeah, that's generic. That is probably quite sen uh, sensible claim. That's right. Unity, yep, definitely. Visual Studio. Notepad++, very helpful, that one. Particular when you um, testing JSON code later on, or JSON as well as data structures and so on. No plus 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 is just a good all rounder to have. Um, completely agree. BB edit, okay. NeoVim, okay, I haven't played with that. Bash, well, Bash is an environment that's new to me, but I'm learning. Um, ooh, okay. PHP Storm, no idea. Haven't worked with PHP for. A decade? I don't know. Anyway, that's on me. But um, so we'll see. Okay, cool. So 76 response. So that's about 80% uh, nearly of the course participants, or about 80%. So it's pretty decent. Cool. So we have IntelliJ represented and VS Code. Those would be the ones I would expect to probably dominate here as well. You're, of course, free to use any other um, 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 IDE you like, but it's really helpful to know what backgrounds you have. So you'll be fa fairly comfortable with the kinds of IDEs that uh, we have proposed so far. You have received again the earlier email, and um, I indicated, you know, that you, if you have the time, the opportunity, start installing Go on your machines already, with particular focus on IDEs such as Code and um, IntelliJ. But don't see this as prescriptive. If you have another preferred IDE and you're very comfortable with, for example, you want to use Atom, I don't know, um, go with this as well. Of course, it works. Maybe a bit more. Um, challenging and setting up and of course we, you will likely experience less support from our side because we may not have the necessary exposure given the diversity of possible ideas um but uh, if you feel comfortable with something else feel free to of course go with this we foster this but i think we by experience expect visual studio go and intellij to dominate and it seems they do okay so it's 4 p.m as promised i give you 10 minutes break and then we'll continue a bit and i'll walk you through our learning management system some of the communication principles and then a tad of you know pointing towards the directions uh, aspects you want to want to prepare for Wednesday. Perhaps if Maj is still present, then he can also share some of the expectations he may have for Wednesday. Uh, but we'll see each other in ten minutes. So thank you very much for your attention so far. So we're back. So we're back in uh, cloud technology. So now we're looking at the other side. So just now, basically, uh, you got a bit of a sense of what the underlying principles are, what the course will likely be about, or at least some core aspects of it, uh, who is involved in the course, of course. Uh, and um, we also talked a bit about your experience already. So it made me very comfortable because I know already that most of you have some sort of Linux exposure and many of you um, um, or we have a rich diversity in experiences across relevant programming languages, all of which kind of uh, bear, or many of which bear some relationship to, to Golang, the language of choice. Please excuse my son. I'm not sure what to do with him. I thought about signing up for the course himself, but he probably would be more annoying than he is now. So my apologies. Um, but um, so you see the screen right now. Um, this is the wiki. That's what you want to see if you sign up. Here's the URL I posted in the um in the in the black block link um that i sent out some some days ago effectively and if you navigate there you should be able to request a access if you haven't already 
And um, this is basically what we're going to use for our interaction with uh, with each other, hopefully. So we'll see how that uh, goes. We usually there are some issues in in, um, in 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 practice, of course, that initially at least that will face. If you can't, for instance, um, edit aspects such as wikis, then it's likely that you don't have the necessary permissions. So here's the idea. Um, this is the entire environment that we're using. It's starting with the wiki, primarily the homepage, or it's called home as the um, you know starting page, if you like. And that has all the information about the course um, that you will hopefully need. It has also all the necessary links. Um, it's linking, for instance, the um, extra course page by NTNU. I can warn you already that something went south. Um, but here you see, of course, the course overview and some of the aspects we're talking about and the learning outcomes which are beautifully formatted um, um so that's something we probably need to work out we have gotten a new kind of um cms i guess for this course management system i think there seem to be some issues to be ironed out or um i didn't i may not have used the features uh correctly in a way but um so here's basically what you are supposed to learn in the course we talk about a bit of the fundamentals of networking cloud operations um, the um, the differentiation between as a service aspects. Um, we talk about social legal implications and impacts of cloud computing. We uh, look a bit at service portfolios offered by typical cloud providers. The ones that come to mind are, of course, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Uh, we talk about APIs in particular, REST as a typical standard and associated standardization bodies. Practically, you will hopefully learn more about data transmission formats, such as being JSON. And then when it comes to skills, um, there will be the ability to talk about cloud services. Um, we'll design RESTful service APIs. So the idea is not to implement them only, but also to think about how to design them as one central aspect. Um, and of course, yeah, apply them to particular problems, right? So uh, some awareness about security. Um, I am very aware that the digital security people will get nervous at this stage. He said some, why do you use such a qualifier? Well, we're not going to do an in-depth security analysis, for instance, but we'll point to essential security aspects you need to bear in mind. Particular firewalling will be one of the aspects that we are talking about. Um, you will learn how to program against various third-party APIs. Uh, we'll draw on those heavily. And here's the funny bit of the course. Some of those at times will be up, down, or whatever, unavailable. This is always a challenge because we rely on third parties. But that's also the main value of cloud technology, or cloud computing more, more, more naturally, that you define or develop service based on other services. That's basically the idea. Deployment will be discussed. And uh, um, that's, of course, central. So general competence will Im improve, hopefully, your programming. Uh, you will be able to talk about cloud uh, technologies to different crowd, being it developers or administrators, for instance. It's also about the linkage between those different uh, stakeholders. And then, of course, the uh, more general implications. We talk about ethical concerns, social concerns, economic concerns, uh, legal concerns, and so on that are relevant. So anyway, this is the classic rundown that you would expect. Uh, I get more into the evaluation aspect in just a second. I just wanted to help you pass this. Yeah, formatting here. But it's all linked from the wiki, essentially. That is, and the wiki also lists who is involved in the course. Uh, you see all the our names here, of course, the respective roles, but also means of contacting. And the main two means of contacting are, on the one hand, of course, email traditionally, because that's the, uh, the NTU mandated standard communication channel, but also Discord uh, with our respective um, identifiers there. So, but here's the thing. Uh, for the communication in the course, we use kind of three possible communication channels for different purposes, and they have different priorities. One thing I would like you to use more prominently is the issue tracker. Issue tracker? Communication? Hmm. Well, the idea is basically that um, we use the, um, we do a lot of, a wide range of different things in this course, right? We, we talk about solution to problems. We have assignments that need to be addressed. We will have platform problems. We may have ideas. We have uh, findings that you may want to proactively share with a group or you know, recent trends in cloud technologies that you feel the course should know about. Uh, and how do we share best? We could, of course, do it in Discord or in other sort of um, chat fora. But the challenge there is a bit that um, things tend to get lost because people start chatting in there, right? So and suddenly you lose track of what the actual core content 
unless you start pinning endlessly, uh, which is also kind of beyond the point of um, this got to some extent. So that's why we think about uh, using the issue tracker for this, because it kind of has the retention property and has the one to many communication feature. So basically you write an issue and hopefully all of us are notified uh, uh, and can respond to it. And of course it has the notion of threading as well. So actually the issue can be, as in an issue tracker can be worked out systematically. And as a, Another aspect is you learn how to hopefully how to write sensible issues, right? If you have, a, for instance, a programming problem that you need to have or want to get assistance on, you will learn how to post or uh, format an issue um, effectively or provide, uh, provide minimal working e examples, for instance, if, which you may have learned already in, for example, on Stack Overflow that people are asking people to provide, you know, the essential bit of the code that's relevant for you and so on. So the issue tracker is quite um, useful. The other one is Discord. Um, I think many of you are on Discord already. Many of the courses that we have on bachelor level will have nudged you into Discord. If um, they haven't, um, then you should consider joining using the following link there. Here's a link under communication. And there's a channel you will be joining the Programming Jovic channel, uh, Discord server, sorry, server. And there's one channel that's called um, Proc2005 Cloud, I believe. You'll find it anyway. And that's the channel we can be using. The good part about this one is quick communication. So if, for example, my Zoom fails or um, you know some other last minute kind of change needs to be done, or you want to chat about the course um, or uh, ask questions quick about the course or, or, or share amongst each other informally without necessarily raising an issue, that's a good environment for this one, right? You can also, of course, DM the TAs or uh, us in any way when you need assistance. That could be one forum for this one as well. So Discord is kind of has this agility element to it, but with limited expectation about persistence. And the last one is, of course, email. If everything you want to have a one to one, uh, a clear communication between uh, uh, to someone or, um, you know, in other ways, seem feel more um, comfortable using email. That's, of course, the official EU, I'm sorry, NTNU mandated channel so three channels but you know also now why we have three channels not just one i think that's quite important to motivate so um how do before i go on here let's just have a look briefly at the issue tracker so when you join and you have sufficient access you should see this menu with many of the different points here um but one of them is simply called issues and that's would be the issue tracker. If you click on this one, you see something like this. If you have a different impression, that's due to the um, varying roles that we're engaging in, right? So you will you will have probably see less and probably less details necessarily, not you know, possibly less details. So the idea is basically um, what you will need to do in order to prepare for the issue tracker is um, you will navigate first to project information. Hopefully you see that link, and there should be a sublink called labels a, a sub menu called labels please let me know if you don't see that or if it doesn't exist and here you find a set of different labels and they're relevant i'll tell you why in a second um or i tell you in fact now why they're relevant the relevance uh, aspect is you only get notification on newly um new issues, basically, if you subscribe to particular labels, A, B, if those labels are actually used in issues. So it becomes very central to start labeling issues that you post. That's also a bit of a good way of searching problems or reviewing problems because uh, your, your issues may pertain to very different uh, challenges. And uh, I've reserved a few labels for this particular purpose. We can introduce further one based on consultation. If you feel like, oh, no, we need other labels such as, feel free to propose those, great idea. Uh, but here are the following ones that I tend to uh, uh use quite a bit there's of course the announcement label um that is used by myself um uh, on and and of course uh, any of the other um teaching members to kind of signal announcement of the course this is kind of you know uh, again zoom channel has changed or here's an update on this particular issue or here's the course example i i wanted to post or there's an additional resource you may want to have a look at before the lecture. So anything that's remotely like an announcement that we would conventionally send via Blackboard, Blackboard would be sent via this one. That's the announcement label. Then we have other labels such as course, course questions. This would be more like organizational questions that you can post and say, oh, I wasn't clear about this particular aspect. Can you offer clarity about this? Uh, and then uh, if it's, for example, of relevance to likely others, um, then um, this would be a good label to use. 
And in my experience is if one of you has a particular question that pertains to organization or to technology, it often is relevant for others as well. So it's a, a shared learning opportunity for everyone involved um, that you can say, oh, thanks for asking this question. So you can use your emoticons to signal this as well, that it was a very good and useful question. There could be platform questions. So if you think about platforms such as, okay, I've issue, you know, setting it up under my operating system or there are particular challenges there that I face. So it's not so much a programming question per se, but rather related to the setup, if you like, or even the uh, IDE, if you like. Um, so that would fall under this kind of category. Then there's the more traditional um, programming question. So where you actually see problems, you can uh, use that label. Reflections, where you think about, okay, let me, you know, if you have a thought about some certain aspects or how um, 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 reflected on why we should do things a certain way or not do another way, this can be ba based on the kind of information that you found when browsing the web or inform informing yourself in a way uh, further about the different tech that we talk about or simply, you know, open discussion points, I guess, not so much just a question, but more discussion points. Those could be offered under reflection. Um, then we have the label review. This will only be relevant once we engage in the assignment uh, activities. That will be when uh, you know there's issues related to well the reviewing process, uh, or more generally, such as um, you know reminders of two people to open their repositories because we, we can't access it, or if you have questions about the review process, um, more generally of the kind of aspects um, that should be addressed, or if things are not clear enough. We'll talk about this quite a bit more about the reviewing process, so don't get nervous about this at all. Uh, that's something that's relevant further down the line. And the last label that uh, we introduced is basically sharing. The idea is there that you can proactively share. You found a good resource, you want to share, share it with the group, all good ideas, uh, just do it. So uh, in order to get notified on any of the labels, uh, or ideally on all of the labels, of course, you will need to tick subscribe. All of them, or many of them, if you haven't already, read subscribe. In my case, then I'll read unsubscribe because I'm subscribed on all those labels. But it means if you post a platform question, I will get an email notification. That will be the email you have registered with when you sign up for GitLab. Please ensure um, to walk through all the labels and just click subscribe on all of them. That's my clear recommendation, at least announcement, but I will go for all of them. That's the way you get the maximum out of the course because most likely there will be shared learning opportunities uh, for everyone involved. But anyway, there should be reasonably self-explanatory. If you have issues, let me know. Well, that was one funny one. Um, if you have concerns about this or questions, uh, feel free to post them in the chat right now. If you don't see the labels or can't subscribe to them or any of this, then we need to deal with this. Um, yeah, back to issues. So how do we write an issue? Well, you know, you can basically write a new issue and say, this is the first issue. We generally have a reasonably meaningful title. That one is not kind of really meaningful because it doesn't pertain to the subject of concern. Um, incidents is probably not so much of a uh, problem. So we can also lodge incidents. That's generally more addressing um, production systems or, you know, operations related concerns. That's probably not the kind of use generally will be an issue. And then you can write your issue there. So if it's a coding issue, I would of course recommend you to clarify the preconditions that you need to meet in order to, for example, reproduce a particular bug that you observe, provide a minimum working ex uh, example. So you narrowing down where the problem occurs, but you still want feedback and, or help on how this works out. Uh, there are some minuscule IDE built in, so you insert code uh, using this one, for example. So it basically allows you to, um, um, yeah, use the system facilities to um, have a nice um, um, layouting already. So it's quite clear what is code and what is uh, narrative, for instance, and so on. So you can play, you have enumerations and otherwise. So it's basically the kind of basic uh, uh syntax that you can use what is important here is down here actually assignee i don't think will necessarily need to work with this extensively um that is because if you have a dedicated issue you want to assign to one individual but i think generally our issues will be assigned to uh will be openly accessible it's implicit that if you address us um, as teaching teams that we hopefully respond to this otherwise you can nudge us by assigning us of course um, but what's more relevant here right now at this stage is really the labels that you choose the right label if you don't again if you don't associate a label there will be no notification to anyone on this so your issue may just be forgotten or not seen effectively so just ensure you pick a label uh, if you feel that none of the label really is appropriate um, uh, uh, just get back to us actually by other means and then we'll see if we can use a label, but chances are you'll find some label that is, or one or more, you can catch multiple labels, 
um, that is remotely uh, relevant to your concern as well. And then you can simply create the issue and you should receive a notification on that one. Cool. I think that's all I wanted to share about the issues in particular. Any, any question about the issues? Feel free to post it in the chat or speak out. It doesn't stop you. I hope it makes somewhat sense, right? I mean, many of you will have that experience already, either from GitLab, from their uh, involvement in some sort of development projects or professional environments. Uh, but I think it's a great opportunity to engage with it if you haven't already. And you should be able to see it once you sign up and you should be able to post it once you have um, signed up. Okay, I don't see any particular question yet. So I'll just move back to the week. Yeah, I'll move back to the wiki. No issues with making issues, says Jon Gunnar, and you seem to be right. Um, in, yeah, cool. All right, so this is basically a communication bit. You should check our Discord email. Again, Discord should work out. You should be able to join. The, if you are not already joined, have joined the server, you should be able to see the Proc2005 channel. Um, yes, feedback, right. Um, Traditionally, we had run this course as well. We had run this course in various ways. Um, as um, it is tradition at NTNU, we are um, supposed to form um, have student representatives and, of course, form evaluation groups as well, in which you can um, representatively collect feedback and convey it to us in one way or another. What we have done lately, though, is um, to move to a more shared model simply because there was due to obvious reasons less um more direct interaction between students and less ability to kind of or i don't know in fact less occurrence of sharing among students about uh, course and course improvement opportunities so what uh, we have devised and i remind you of this throughout hopefully the uh, course a dedicated feedback um, section so you see the main wiki here that's the home wiki that you most likely always start your navigation from but you have a lot of secondary pages that are listed on the right sidebar and if you click on feedback it's of course listed from link from here as well you will see a page that's called feedback uh, and on the one hand you can post feedback via a form this one is anonymous completely anonymous um, and gdpr compliant in case uh, you have any of such concerns um, so you'll be able to just post what you think about the course and give give some sort of feedback um, and if you like. I'll um, regularly look at this and we'll uh, follow up on this, of course, uh, where we can immediately. Classic is remember to give breaks, <laughs> um, but some aspects, you know, they may come simply come um, too late, right? So if, if there's already an issue with a given assignment, then that will only probably be beneficial for any future assignment, not so much for the one that has been um, given before, of course. Um, and you, but in addition to this one, if you just, you know, feel comfortable sharing, I generally, I'm very, I don't know, um, open about this, you can immediately modify the page. So feel free to, you know, edit the page directly. Of course, it will appear in the edit history. So your name will literally be in there, but, um, it hasn't been much of an issue in the past. In this instance, in this case, you do just, you know, provide feedback on other particular, um, wherever you feel, um, it fits to give breaks. Let's use an example. You can use then the feed, uh, the preview function actually see how it kind of looks like. Um, you also have the, of course, the documentation here. When you, if you are um, new to Markdown, have a look at the documentation. It gives you the, uh, the GitLab syntax as well. You can also try the new editor. I wasn't so super happy with the editor because I'm too used to write in Markdown. So I kind of tend to do Markdown directly. Uh, and again, there's the documentation so you know how you can create links, enumerations, uh, indentations, um, section levels, and so on. I think it's a good skill to have, to be honest, because if you're managing your own open source or other project, for example, on GitHub, you will also encounter a slightly different dialect, but never less markdown. So it's a good skill to be had. Um, so I would encourage you to actually engage with this and use it. Uh, then after preview, you can check whether it actually works the way you want. You can simply save the changes. So that's the feedback side. Uh, but um, if you um, if you manage to um, and would be very happy if someone steps forward and says, hey, I want to be the course representative, for instance, or even better, if people want to form an evaluation group, uh, I'm absolutely happy to accommodate this um, as, as a um, probably preferred forum for, um, for for feedback giving. But this has worked quite OK, I think, because I got reasonably meaningful feedback um, either via the form or directly via this page. So feel free to use it at any time. Yeah, I, we'll look at it. Um, um, but yeah, so basically you can directly edit it. 
it. Um, okay. By the way, you are edit able, how, for good or bad, edit any page in the project. So I trust you that you do the, will do so meaningfully, but we'll also have a page history, of course, where we can follow up and see. But on the other hand, this is also desirable because where I in particular make mistakes and we do that all the time, or you want to fix uh, typos or you want to offer corrections or even additional information in some instances, because we have quite some resources we're going to walk through in a bit, um, then you can do so directly. And um, the this in, in as far as productive and valuable, we also consider this a contribution to the course. So I'll account for this in the assessment of the course entirely. Same as with the issue tracking, um, which is also considered a you know, proactive contribution to the course, especially in a setting where we can't directly interact or not as easily directly interact, let's say, via, um, uh, uh, via discussion. OK. Um, yes. Okay, that's about that. Again, so if you sign up, you should be able to edit um, pages as well. Resources. Um, yeah, for now, I've posted some resources that we're using that may be built up a bit, but you get a bit of a sense of the core uh, tech solutions that we are going to be drawing on uh, throughout the course. Um, Golang being the first one, um, Heroku, Firebase, and Object, something that we're going to use. That's hosted here by NTDU ourselves. Um, so we have quite a bit of flexibility of using this part of the course. We'll return to many of those points later, uh, but it's perhaps good to have those resources already handy. So one of the more interesting, well, probably for you, more interesting parts uh, are, of course, the um, deliverables of the course. The course is split into two parts, as most of them are into one that relies on internal assessments, so it would be the classical assignments and projects, and then, of course, what we call the external assessment, that would be the exam. Right now we have a distribution of 60-40, so in favor of the internal assessments, um, they um, yeah, consist effectively uh, of two assignments that we're going to have. The first two assignments, um, and um, they are incrementally more challenging, but incrementally also more um, uh, flexible. So you will have more uh, flexibility to, to inject new ideas, features, and your, yourself to some extent you like. The firm, first assignment, not so much. That's more like a stock standard assignment, if you like, to, to, to really ensure meaning prescribed, prescriptive assignment. So you know what you're getting into and you're getting also a thorough overview of the different um, techniques that you're going to be using. So we are, we as teaching team have the confidence that you understand once you master that assignment, we have the confidence that you understand the underlying technology. So, um, and this is followed by this uh, project that I mentioned just um, before, where you have greater liberty, but you also work in a, generally in a group setting. So be aware of this one. It's also a good way of um, ensuring that you get to know each other. Bear in mind, this is um, the, well, you have integration project, but afterwards you're moving into the bachelor situation. That's also something where we need to work in group settings. So um, this is, has a strong group component here that we generally expect you to um, drawn as part of the course. So um, marking. Mm, we had traditionally, just to give you some backdrop, um, associated individual marks to individual assignments and projects. And intuitively, it sounds like a really good idea uh, because it makes it very easy to assess your own progress and keep track of your own progress, if you like. But we have incrementally also realized that we need to step away from this a bit more because um, de facto, the first assignment, if you really do your job, it's quite sensible that you, you know, definitely master that one. It should be possible because we get, keep this as an entry level assignment, and thereby the threats are reasonably manageable. What we instead have moved over to is to have a, a portfolio assessment. So it means we still have an approximate association of marks with different courses, but in order to accommodate, um, uh, um, um, you know, for example, very proactive contribution to the course or excessive contributions to, um, you know, bonus tasks, if you like, to other assignments and or pro uh, really incredible projects or whatever else, we wanted to introduce a way of perhaps compensating for shortcomings on the one hand um, uh, across all those marks, which we otherwise can't. Hence, we um, shifted to a portfolio mark assessment, basically. So you still get 60% for the overall portfolio. You have a rough sense of the distribution, but you only know the final kind of mark once as part of the portfolio, the final end mark. Uh, effectively giving a bit more this flexibility. In fact, though, that's also a fact that in there as well is your contribution in peer reviews. So the, the, the course contribution is not only doing the assignments, but also reviewing others assignments. Again, this is a very guided process. So don't feel that you're you know, out on your own there. So we guide you through the process because that's the competence you uh, are intended to develop anyway as a software developer. 
in particular. Um, but the, doing those is uh, um, um, also considered um, relevant, as well as the contributions to wiki and or issues in particular as well. So if you're very, you know, pro-socially contributing, I think then it desires um, or de deserves reward as well. Uh, if we had a very rigid structure of our marking scheme, that would really prevent us from doing this properly because we can't um, accommodate um, the, the proactive contribution of the book. Of course, details on the assignments uh, and the projects and deadlines and all that kind of um, uh, stuff are going to follow. I can already tell you that the anticipated deadline for the first assignment will be around the 21st of February, uh, but it depends a bit on the progress and the need, for example, for the need to, to make up for um, um, Golang concepts, for instance, or Linux foundations and so on. We'll talk about this a bit more and uh, discuss this ongoingly through the um, course. But fundamentally, the idea is to have something towards uh, the third week of uh, February, then the same in March, and um, then towards end of April, the project. But we need to be a bit cautious there. We're playing this a bit agile, depending on the situation right now, that is the corona situation, but also the learning progress uh, generally. I tend, other than uh, in contrast to many other courses, not to rigidly prescribe um, the details and prescribe every session that we're going to have, but rather play based on the process, progress that we make collectively. It's, I deem it more important that we collectively have a, a shared understanding and that we actually understand the concepts I'm talking about and rather spend more time on this one rather than rushing to the next one. So um, this, the concession to this is basically that I don't have all the session details uh, fleshed out here at this stage. But um, again, I get to that in a second. So under the whole lecture rubric, you on the one hand find the Zoom link, um, but also a link to the play YouTube playlist. So uh, in as far as you allow me to record, and for now I think um, uh, that's that's basically the idea, um, I'll post them um, after our session on YouTube eventually and link this to those to this playlist so you can um, re-watch effectively those sessions as well. This is the link to the playlist here. The Zoom link is the one you're using now. Uh, note that for next session onwards, uh, we're using a different Zoom, Zoom link simply because uh, Marish will take over by introducing you to Golang and we, therefore we need to have a shared uh, Zoom link that we can then use throughout the remainder of the semester for the cloud course. So please anticipate a change in this link. So basically make your life easy and uh, for the next session simply use whatever link is there uh, to ensure that, that you're on the right track. So sorry for the slight inconvenience and link shiftery um, that yeah, in yeah, given the circumstances and the synergies we want to exploit, um, this is necessary. But uh, I also sent a um, issue as a reminder, so it will be a first announcement issue that you'll see um, uh, that posts that exact that new link and uh, reminds you of using this one. And this one will be exchanged here as well. Okay, so that will be for the live session. This one will be for reviewing mostly the recording lectures. Um, here will be the session details. I will link, for example, the uh, um, lecture details, for example, the PDFs that I have, oh, sorry, the PowerPoint PDF that I've shown you today, for instance, um, and the results for Mentimeter as well. So you have a sense and that will incrementally build up. At the same time, we'll work off more or less, not in a kind of linear sense necessarily, and certainly not uh, suggesting, uh, you know, a per lecture bullet point here, um, the, those topics that are listed here, right? So we talk a bit about the principle of cloud computing, probably not really today we'll probably rather talk about Golang first that will be next session but that's not a problem at all then we'll follow up a bit more on Golang topics that haven't been covered by Marsh because they're more specific to cloud computing uh, uh, only then we talk about rest principles similar to the slide I mentioned earlier we talk about Heroku testing peer review because at that stage we'll talk about the first assignment and the peer review activities you're going to engage in we're following the kind of introduction and you know your experience developing your experience with rest we're learning a bit about graphql is another kind of standard or emerging standard in the area of uh, cloud technologies and um, service apis in particular so about firebase as a, a back-end storage solution webhooks as an um, you know event um, um, subscription principle in in the context of cloud computing then we talk about more we talk interleaved about more conceptual aspects such as the um, different variants of as a service so infrastructure platform and so software as a service virtualization is one of the key technical topics we'll uh, talk about openstack docker and um, the legal implications and economic implications of um, cloud technologies that underlie it so there's a bit of open-endedness we also may have external lectures that i'm not sure yet about whether they come about um, in the current circumstance so there's a bit of flexibility but i hope it gives you a rough build up of the kinds of topics we're going to look at 
and also a basis for you to say uh, uh, to, to give feedback of what you want to see even more uh, depending on the progress we have in my experience we rarely manage to cover all this in depth simply because of the progress but that is um, okay you will have uh, sufficient exposure or uh, supplementary resources to to work with this um, yeah anyway that's the plan and that's as far as we have the information here right now so that's the main course page you hopefully find everything you need there um on the right side there are some more uh, pages i just briefly highlight what they do the prerequisites there's a certain expectation about what you bring to the course in order to master it remember that um you know learning is to um to considerable extent owned we provide you resources we'll provide you a bit of a nudge but also the force if you like to to do uh, to to learn things basically by giving for example assignments which force you to learn the underlying technology and apply it um so but uh, we also rely on certain prerequisites that you bring to the course in order to make it a success and one of them is of course that you master your own environment right for a particular software developer we expect that they master they um, uh, um environment um independently whatever it may be we don't care what operating system you run really um that's something you want to um, be comfortable with but what we also would expect that you have a foundation in programming i think marsh will remind you of this in the upcoming session of what you need to know and that would at least be um, our uh, foundational programming grindley in the programming um, course and uh, object-oriented programming uh, object-oriented programming for our internationals um, <clears throat> those are the prereq for this course more immediately if you have some networking operating system experience great um but you probably survive without it as well um i have the sense the other aspect that's um that i really want to explicitly highlight and the course rules make this even clearer is that we increasingly shift towards assuming best practices and experiences professionalism in your role as a software developer so when we talk about uh, writing code you will no longer hear us or no longer uh, explicitly stating that you should have a documentation, that you should comment your code, that you possibly want to write tests for your code. Um, you know, so um, we expect a certain level of independence um, in, in terms of your thinking and planning and management of your own software development process um, in the fourth semester now, because you're going to be uh, professional software developers. Uh, and I think this is kind of now our test run for this one playground, so to say, but it also means that you can you know, want to look at coding conventions, you want to follow, be consistent about them in the use of your coding. And of course, I, of course, uh, versioning, right? So it's a very important topic. I hope that all of you had some experience with versioning so far. Good. And we're not pushing the boundaries here in any way. It's really about having a solid uh, proficiency in using Git, uh, but you would want to be able, you know, be very acquainted with the concepts of cloning, pulling, committing, pushing, branching, and perhaps merging. Uh, you know, we, if you, yeah, so ability to, to roll back, cherry pick is slightly beyond what we necessarily need in all instances of the course, but the baseline commands or functionalities is something you want to be acquainted with. So if some of them feel a bit um, strange to you or you haven't heard about them, it's probably a good indicator that you want to either read up on them or basically, uh, um, um, you know, refresh yourself on those ones. Um, there's a posting for several tutorials on this one. Um, that you can that you can basically draw on Yon Gina, uh, I recall um, provide the input there. Um, there's tutorials for you know having a big input uh, and then it's, it's here Mark as well also. So I want to acknowledge the sources. Um, uh, there's a tutorial that incrementally builds up more beginner level and a more comprehensive one that uh, focus on all the central features um, of the Git um, management process. So that's um, so those two resources are quite central so have a look at them and see if if, if you feel um, if you are sufficiently acquainted course rules we always need them um they are pretty they're really rigid but it's you know as you manage as you learned already i have a, a latent interest in uh studying uh analysis of legal text so it seems like that is written in that same form no that's just a joke but those are some of the principles that we want to uh, abide by we have some general ground rules in the course uh, that we expect you um, to follow and you can expect us to follow as well but it ensures that we have a shared understanding for many things um, um, there are some general things that you know like um, more like the rationale why, what they call why the course in English mostly because so it's open to international students but also international lecturers to some extent 
Uh, otherwise, we end up in the comedy, comedy problem, as I mentioned just before. Um, being part of Discord is uh, important. Being part of the um, GitLab is very important. Um, expectation of regular and independent work so that you will likely have a load of 15 hours per week. And to, to in some instances, that's to some extent self-defined. For example, if you are learning about GitLab, sorry, not GitLab so much, but Golang, for instance, this week, uh, there may be examples and opportunities for learning, perhaps exercises, but there's also then, of course, an expectation that you kind of independently learn by providing, of course, some resources and pointing to resources, such as the famous go tour. But um, going through those, it's something you can should be able to manage and see whether you arrive, um, uh, draw some learning from there. As I mentioned before, uh, professionalism in software development is something we assume for semester, second year. So that's a bit of a uh, thing we don't necessarily you know prescribe this anymore but it's kind of it should be built in it should be part of your 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 sense of professionalism that you want to live actually as um a software developer uh prerequisites management um yes so there are some conventions about um the um the use of external resources we are open to you and in fact, we wouldn't even want to and can't monitor you with respect to use of external resources being for your programming problems or otherwise, which is in principle okay. The key thing is there that you actually learn and understand what you're referencing, what you're using. So you need to know and understand the course snippet you're using. The one and the other aspect is also to acknowledge. Um, we are in an academic environment and it is just best practice for us to um, acknowledge origin and, um, and, and the, the, the ownership of you know code and so on and or text of course uh, when you think about publications more immediately uh, and that's the same here as well if you actually borrow from somewhere feel free to do so just be clear to acknowledge it if it's from the issue tracker for instance or from stack overflow it's also good for you because you actually keep track from where you took it from if anyone asks you in a review for instance what does that code snippet actually do and mean right so and you can say, ah, right, this, I searched for this in this particular context, and it may actually be helpful to be able to backtrack to that particular thread in Stack Overflow and see the commentary that convinced you, for instance, that this code snippet was a solution to the problem you faced. Anything else would technically be plagiarism, right? So that's the problem there. So we need to watch out for plagiarism, and we always find it uh, in the end. It doesn't seem like it, but if you actually copy port for a code from the from the net, it's very chances that someone finds it either reviewers or us is usually incredibly high there's no value in, in in doing it so be clear and become professional about um uh, referencing as well it's also very important if you start actually publishing your own code in an open source manner that you abide by those rules for your own sake that's the expectation of the community cool um general expectations about lectures um we encourage but don't require you to participate in election that's a bit weird isn't it uh, but we don't want to give you a sense that we are in a school we're going to give you a sense that you want to own your learning if we talk about stuff that you know already there's little value perhaps for you to attend the lectures conversely if you feel like oh that's definitely something i need to learn about or you are uh, uh, you know want to draw as much as possible out of the course and uh, you know, learn as much as possible. We strongly encourage you, but you need to own it. You need to be committed and motivated to come and be willing to come. It's not always easy. I understand that, especially given the current circumstances, sometimes the timing of the lectures. I understand that 3 p.m. is as bad as 8 a.m. in the morning. For some people, bad, better for some worse. Um, and uh, the um, yeah, so that that so that's something you can define uh, to some extent. You can come late to lectures and you can leave early as well if you have to. We'll generally not take this. I take this as a subtle note of feedback in the sense that, oh, okay, I definitely need to up my game. But sometimes you are, I understand you have confli uh, conflicting commitments or want to change between online and physical presence for another course or have the opportunity to do so or other obligations. So that's fine. It's your responsibility to follow up basically and ensure that you um, have the learning uh, outcome that you want from this. But that's on the other end why we give, um, we hopefully provide uh, links for all the lectures unless you keep us from doing so or if there are technical difficulties sometimes and that's um yeah seems to be a pattern uh, at least one semester my laptop breaks down somewhere on some stage uh so we learn lose a bit of video i guess um but uh, uh, uh this can of course happen sometimes that the streaming setup doesn't work as expected but it we have becoming have been becoming better um throughout the pandemic especially since the zoom um infrastructure has been scaled up for scandinavia quite a bit um okay some lectures yeah well yeah sometimes we are slightly delayed if there are streaming issues so technical issues barring there's the other aspect 
Um, so there's a listing here that is quite, quite, quite um, challenging and sounds a bit in, perhaps intimidating to some extent. But this is kind of the uh, graduate, sorry, the student profile that we kind of the expectation to have for second year students more generally across courses, not specific to cloud at all. Uh, just to get a sense a bit um, that you know that you need to bring independence and have your own planning on how to do your work and when to do your work um, as well. Um, okay. Okay, so participation, you are, you, 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 yeah, you can do kind of anything you like, of course, where there's proactive participation, it counts for your mark. Um, I saw in the chat earlier a question about group sizes, we recommend the group sizes of uh, three to five for projects, um, smaller can work, larger doesn't work, my experience, because then it basically um, um, student commitment for drops off um, disproportionately is our experience, but it depends also, of course, on the workload, if you have a five, person group, you better have a decent amount of contribution you want to offer as part of the project, right? If it's only two people, then it's probably kind of small scale, but very intense work as well. Um, we talk about this more, of course, but for every group, we want to have a contact, someone we can actually get in touch with, a group leader. And uh, they are, unfortunately, in any group setting, there's always the challenge that not everyone may contribute, group compositions change and otherwise, someone needs to keep track. And that's where the re uh, representative, or sorry, the responsible, the leader comes in to define those rules and follow up on them effectively. Uh, and to organize, of course, the group as well, to some extent. But where we need it, we, of course, step in as well, right? So if a leader feels my group is, that's not happening, is falling apart or something, then uh, it's for us to take over again. We need a leader to kind of signal this because we can't, we don't know necessarily those internals um cool yes um each assignment should be submitted um i have gotten a bit more rigid and strict um uh, in terms of the assignments and the submissions that are necessary the reason is basically um as not doing assignment is a strong predictor for not passing the course um in my experience because every assignment has it's 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 a part of the puzzle of the entire course and they get progressively more complex if you don't do them you will just not you will suffer later on. So uh, doing and having a solid attempt at each assignment, irrespective of variable levels of performance and contribution, is just really relevant. Otherwise, I don't see people, um, you know, succeed in a course. If you didn't find the time to do assignment one, chances are you'll probably not find the time and have the skill to do assignment two. And just as a, uh, uh, it's kind of in more, to some extent, more in your interest that, than it necessarily um, should be in mine. So to just do the assignments. Deadlines um, initially work with kind of we need to gauge the deadlines, but they eventually get final. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm aiming for like say a third week of February for the initial assignment, but we need to see about the progress right now and the learning opportunities along the way until we make them actually final. Um, that's something I'll uh, repeatedly um, uh, reiterate over. Um, here's some points about anonymity. We need to be aware that we are streaming publicly and po positioning publicly in YouTube, for instance. If you feel, for instance, that you um, are uncomfortable with lectures being posted like publicly, publicly, then we can make them, for instance, unlisted links as well. So you only have access if you actually know the link, unless you, of course, openly share it. So we have a certain level of privacy within the course if if, if you think that's more appropriate, um, especially if that's contributing to your contribution to the course, because um, one of the things in this online time, and I will probably repeat this experience, is always uh, you're not quite sure, of course, whom you're talking to, but also not sure in how far, there's no feedback link in a way, right? So any contribution is valuable, and I appreciate the chat here, uh, really. Um, so, but if it makes it easier for you to contribute, I'm more than happy to accommodate anything that makes you more comfortable in this environment to actually do so. Um, Cool. Yes, so um, yeah, we tend to not record Q&A sessions. In my experience, that or oh, it depends on the kind of a Q&A session, but certainly not where we have a classical Q&A as in more like an assistance in the assignment sense. If it's a tutorial, of course, we do that. But in a Q&A session, uh, it's generally not as appropriate because it's oftentimes really identifiable data, meaning one-to-one -one interactions that are embedded in there. That's generally not something you would post uh, openly. Last point is about feedback. I mentioned already how we do this. You can read through this and see how it goes, uh, uh, what the expectations generally are from NTNU's side or from my side. Uh, but here's the point after the feedback. So I really walk you quite strenuously through some of those rules, but I think it's really important and necessary to ensure that we kind of are on the same page. And if you feel you disagree on the rules, then we need to adjust and work on them because that's the level we can work on. And I realize already, um, 
um, th that um, we overstated the number of hours that you should post to work a week. I think 15 points correspond to one ECTS. Uh, I need to do the maths again, but uh, that's probably a bit, indeed a bit too much. Uh, but on that note, um, letting you know that um, the, I, I wouldn't approach the course with an accounting mindset. If you're saying you're working so and so many hours for this course and you think you succeeded, of course, ideally that's desirable, but that's not how the world is and that's not how we are. We are all slightly individual and slightly different. Some of us take a bit longer to learn new concepts, new languages. Some of us are more efficient in it because you have learned five languages before. So please account for your individual experience and your own reflection on how you learn, right? Sometimes you need to invest more time in the beginning and it pays off later on, or uh, you, you will fly through the course and don't have don't feel that you need to commit the time that we actually prescribe whereas others really struggle to kind of even meet the requirements of the course because it's it appears so much uh well, that, something we need to, to talk about and i think something you should back channel to us so we know actually what's happening um but uh don't expect that we we give you a hard number we know exactly that each and um, every one of you will be able to commit to this and this only in order to pass the course or in order to you know succeed to a satisfactory level to yourself Okay, um, all right, so exploited the time quite a bit. There are some more pages I encourage you just to have a look at. We'll, we'll get to those when they become more relevant. And then there's the installation of Golang, the IDE in particular, especially for the IntelliJ or Golang as a particular uh, variant of IntelliJ that's uh, um, only focused on, on uh, Go as a programming language, as well as Visual Studio Code. So they are provided there. There's some Linux foundations. Uh, we'll get back to that later. I don't think you need to attend to this more immediately. There's also a quick quick start page on Golang. So you know, posted quite some helpful information um, uh, on that one um, as well for later on. I see some questions in the chat that I'm responding to now. I'll follow up on the hours basically that uh, you need to commit per course. So we need to talk a bit about the courses, uh, sorry, the co work commitment across courses, because we know we have, you have roughly four courses, or rather exactly four courses in this semester. And we kind of need to work a bit um, and, and see what's where, where we deem the average to sit. But on the other hand, uh, bear in mind, it's highly individualized. And I think um, that's something you need to bear in mind. Um, there is a question that's a good one. What will be group work, individual work? Um, very straightforward. The assignments will be individual work. So the first two assignments will be highly, completely individual. The project will be um, group work. That's the, that's the differentiation, basically. Um, so initially, you only work individually. The idea is basically to bring you all up to a level of proficiency that you're comfortably working with you know, infrastructure and goaling individually. That's very important. That's the main learning outcome that you want to take away on the technical side, the skill side. So, and that's why we do this. And then we exploration comes afterwards. That's the idea and the philosophy. Okay. Um, so, yes. So those are the main points there. Questions. We are hitting 1701. This will be the first feedback you can post to me. Please stop lectures on time. Yes, I get it. Um, but perhaps I can ask for forgiveness for this time and next time I hope I pledge for betterment. Um, if there are any questions, please post them there. If not, I would encourage you perhaps to post some of the expectation you might have for this course here. So I get a bit of a sense, the kind of things that, or in particular, uh, if there are things that I haven't thought about or talked about that you want to see reflected in the course, I hope you see uh, Menti again. If you're still open, you can feel, feel free to post more. Uh, perhaps that also um, triggers you to ask some questions. But if there are any questions, feel free to use the chat, especially if it pertains to the aspects we just talked about. Um, um, or um, if it's more techie related, then you can, I mean, like, you know, more concepts you want to learn in the course, then you put them in um, Mentimeter. The good part about Mentimeter is that it will persist because I'll send this again, the slide set or the, the PDFs that um, are produced by this, um, or make them accessible to you as well via GitLab. Um, main homework from my side is to um, sign up for GitLab. It's super important um, because you will eventually start doing little projects in there. Marsh will probably talk more about the workspace idea and how we use this in the course. It's basically your workspace that we can use. To some extent, aspects are prescribed where we want to expect, where, you know, paths that we expect to 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 hold to 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 um, um, 
um, use for the assignments or prescribed ones. And then there's a lot of flexibility for you to, you know, have your own uh, pet projects or examples or try out things and so on. So, but in order to set this up from our side, we need you to join GitLab first as a developer, uh, uh, similar as you have done just before. So we'll infre we will, of course, get notifications. We'll look at this infrequently, but it would be really good if you do it as up. Um, then you have the full access and can do basically everything from modifying the wiki where you see fit to uh, posting issues uh, where desirable, and then we'll be able to run uh, the scripts that set up the workspace environment. Very good comment from Jungyna just now. Remember signing up with your student account. That's super important. That's the one ending with edstat.ntnu.no. Don't use any Gmail or any of these other stuff. Um, because it makes uh, it's a lot easier for us to ensure cred that we can credibly identify that you're a new student. Um, that's very important because we don't necessarily want to have uh, any other problems there. If you have problems with this, of course, get in touch. We need to deal with this. Um, yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. Good question. How do you long have you prayed for the account to be approved? Well, actually, not really long. It depends a bit on the admins because um uh you you i think you're, you're talking from an external perspective external and external perspective right now uh we there's a two-step process the one first step is to basically um get you onto gitlab in the first place the second one is to join the course so slightly inconvenience there i admit it but as soon as we uh, attend to it you should be immediately approved um perhaps i i have a we'll, we'll click around um perhaps concurrently um, but currently, I'm still looking at um, this. But um, yeah, perhaps I'm not sure, Marius, you're free. Marius, if you're free right now, you could perhaps approve if, if there's any new sign up outstanding uh, from a. Uh, you're muted. I'm clicking on the GitLab level. You can check the course level. Cool. Um, so yeah, we do that pretty much in real time. So you should be pretty much approved after that. Let me just. Um, so you also see how it looks on the admin side, what we do. Um, if I'm still sharing and we generally look at. Oh, no, they're all approved on my side. So 82 members. Yes, cool. Um, but of course, that will increase. So there are two, uh, Vizar and Herman, who used oh, yeah. ntnew.no email. That's unacceptable. Uh, you have to use your student email. <laughs> unacceptable. Um, <laughs> that's right. So that, that's, yeah, don't take him as strong as it sounds. So um, yeah, use the one with that ends on edge start. Um, that would be good. Um, yeah. So we differentiate a bit, but we will be approved pretty much immediately. So I minimize this again. Okay. Um, some reflections. I think we're nearly done here anyway. Um, okay. I don't see any surprises. Uh, what do you intend to learn? Git mastery. Interesting. Um, that's generally not the core of the course, but it's a byproduct um, that you, especially in group setting, will suddenly learn to use branching more effectively. APIs. Yeah, definitely. Being a pro at NS Paint. That would get me. Um, I don't know about that one yet, MS Paint. It's still part of Windows 10, I know, 11. Hopefully they removed it, I don't know. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to uh, lend proficiency MS, MS Paint, I'm the first one to um, aspire to learn it. What else do we have? IAS, REST, AWS. Yeah, I need to see about that one. Many things, new things, hopefully. Firebase, definitely. Yes, um, cloud technologies, Golang. Yes, you will be satisfied with that one. Industry standards, good one, very good one. We talk about this. Um, standards and in industry, how they're defined, and which forums you need to keep an eye on as a um, um, software developer in particular or IT professional in the first place to know where things are coming from and how processes of this nature work. So I really appreciate this input. Cool. Yep. Okay. Feel free to post there. I'll just, you know, wait until it flows down and then uh, uh, I'll link all that stuff uh, later on in um, GitLab. So you will not, unfortunately, you will not get a notification on new posts on the wiki. That's the uh, nature of GitLab. I'm not sure if there's a feature of doing this or activating this, but there is for now not. So you will kind of need to look yourself, but you can expect later a day later that, you know, we have updated all the resources in as far as relevant to a lecture, often more immediately, but sometimes uh, conflicting appointments uh, keep us from doing this quite immediately. But you should basically see the resources there. You can click on them, they build up incrementally. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's, uh, um, re yeah, let's reflect on the comment. Vim, yeah, well, you can use Vim, of course. Uh, we can also provide you a bit of cheat sheets and a bit of things, but uh, I, I don't uh, necessarily think it's the mainstay. I 
well, I wouldn't necessarily go with the IDE thing here, but the uh, mainstay programming environment, but some people like it a, a lot um, and Myers as well. So you, you may find some exposure, but that should not be prescriptive. You can do it, but you don't have to. Okay, lots of talk from my side. Um, there are no more questions. Then I'll conclude the discussion at this stage. On Wednesday, as I promised, please sign up again. Uh, as I promised before, we'll send out the link. Uh, yes, also one last time via Blackboard, uh, because I, I understand that not everyone may have 100% managed to sign up to the course and may not get any announcements there. Um, to the Zoom room that we're going to use from Wednesday onwards. We'll also post it here, of course, as on the main uh, homepage of, of the GitLab Wiki. Uh, and um, you will have an experience. Uh, Marsh will introduce you to GitLab. Marsh, do we expect anything in terms of prereq for that already? I mean, um, uh, just to give you some background, you're muted. I um, gave them a nudge of perhaps installing some one IDE and Golang on the machine. Yeah, that's kind so, of a starting point. Yeah, exactly. Installing Golang and installing IDE would be good. Um, good starting point. Uh, we're using um, yeah the 17.6 uh, right. or 17.5, um, and then you you told them about different IDs. So whatever is uh, preferred, the people who are doing uh, proc 2006, they probably will benefit using IntelliJ Ultimate because then you can switch from different mm. programming languages much e e easily. Uh, people who only taking cloud and only using Golang, then um, Goland is fine. Yeah, um, it's up to up to you. We don't enforce any particular ID. Um, what is cool either way, I think you should exploit the uh, JetBrains portfolio a bit because you have a student uh, account there, right? So you can pretty much use. I think any of their products, I'm not sure, but a really wide range of their products. And that's a really cool opportunity for you to you know, have that exposure and know this IDE. And sometimes it's also good to know your enemy. So even if you're not necessarily a fan of it, it's still good to kind of uh, get a sense of what the, what the IDE offers you. So, um, and of course, VS Code is inherently popular, but that's uh, open source anyway. So that's, that's free for you. And it, it works really well with, yep. uh, as, as Sven Korra is saying, it works really well with Golang too. Um, that's um, experience we have as well from the last year. Cool. Any more comments for anyone? Teaching team included? No, so far not. They fall off. Everyone fell asleep. That's okay. In the first session. Later on, we hopefully keep you more excited about things. But there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen in the first session. That's why it takes us a bit. Okay, cool. Thank you for today. Suck for da for Idark. And we see each other on Unstag latest. And uh, with Golang. Cool. If you have any issues, oh, that was one. Post an issue. Well, DM, um, you know, Proc 2005 Discord for those kind of, oh, you know, I forgot to ask, can I, can you do the following? That's the, that's the classical Discord thing. If you have a more broader question to the entire class, issue tracker, any dramas, email. But I don't think we have dramas yet. So we'll see about it. Mm. Cool. So, okay, feel free to leave any time. I'll stop the recording at this stage and I'll uh, post it under the link uh, as I promised before. Bye-bye.